And so most of you Mine may too. recognize her from CHOP and we're, we're very, very excited for her to give us an international perspective on food. Um, people like Monique can really help us in the Caribbean in better position in our culinary product. So thank you, Monique. And we will move thank on to, to Kevin Cottle. Hey everybody, I, uh, I actually had three restaurants in um, the Cayman Islands a few handful of years ago. So I'm kind of familiar with that whole aspect. Currently I have 11 cruise ships, small cruise ships across the country. We do everything from Creole, Louisiana stuff to you know, Alaskan um, type foods and New England and everything in between. So it's pretty unique where each cruise ship has very diverse um, food and, and mainly everybody comes on our cruise ship basically to eat and see Americana history. So uh, it's quite important to us too to kind of fuse everything we can possibly do across the United States, which is great because it's a, um, it's just a wonderful fusion of foods and all kinds of different types of things that we can do. I also own a small ski resort here with a restaurant in Connecticut. Um, so I keep myself a little bit busy. Great. And again, another modest panelist, Kevin actually was on Hell's Kitchen. He was a runner up and oh my goodness, how long ago was that Kevin? A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I know Kevin from, um, being on Hell's Kitchen. So I told you, um, attendees that we have a really diverse group. I didn't even know about the Cayman Islands part of your life, Kevin. So yeah. that, that's very good to know. Also so came, you for came to Antigua with you quite a bit and did some yes, you wonderful, did. wonderful cooking with some locals down there as well. Was... Oh yeah, I, I have some pictures. I found that picture when you when you went to the market and yep. you were cooking fungi and, and um, pepper pot, our national dish, that was several years ago. Yep, yep. yep. All righty, so next up we have uh, Suzette. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Suzette Finlayson. I have been in travel over 20 years, and one of my passions is actually food and culinary tourism. Uh, what I try to do with my clients um, is I try to customize their food experience uh, when they go primarily to Jamaica, and I have set up in the past uh, food tours with chefs. I have done culinary tours, and I've also customized uh, villa stays. So if a client wanted to rent a villa for a week, we were able to customize their food choices with the chef um, on island in Jamaica. Great, thank you so much, Suzette. Um, you are definitely the one at the, you're, you, you know, you're at the end of the end product. Everyone else can give us advice, but you can tell us what sells and what doesn't sell. So really great perspective. Okay, up next we have Doug. Hey everybody, my name is Doug Singer. Um, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. Um, I have owned a business in the Caribbean, but I'd say the thing that most relates to our discussion today is um, one of my things I'm involved in, I'm the travel editor for Jet Set Magazine, amongst some other magazines I'm involved with. And I've been to dozens of Caribbean islands and written about the culture and the food extensively. And one of the things that I love about the Caribbean is the diversity from island to island. Um, ultimately, I like to think of myself as a storyteller. And so when I travel to these places, I really want to find the story. And a lot of times the story comes from the cuisine. It is a great way to share the story of a culture. And like I said, the diversity, there are the things that connect and the things that make them unique. And that for me is what really drives my passion as for me, the Caribbean is by far my favorite area in the world. Great. And Doug, tell us about, let me use this opportunity before I forget, because there's going to be a lot of top, we're going to cover a lot of topics. Doug just, uh, He's written several books, but his most recent cookbook, um, I, the name slip, slips me, he will tell you. He has willingly um, agreed to um, gift everyone who has logged on today to this webinar to a free download of his cookbook. So I feel like Oprah right now with a talk show telling everyone, everyone gets a book. Uh, the way we are gonna do it, we need, if you want to receive the book, you need to, um, drop us your email address in the comments of uh, the, you know, the comment section of, of, of Zoom so that we can forward you your, um, your free download. It's a really amazing book and it's an award-winning book. 
So you may want to call all of your colleagues and your travel uh, advisor partners who have not logged on, tell them that there's a free giveaway that they may, may miss out on unless they, they absolutely have to log on and tell us and give us their email addresses. So Doug, thank you so much for that uh, generous gesture. Uh, next, we will go to Trinez. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Trinez Woods Black, I'm third generation Sylvia's Restaurant, where I serve as the VP of Communications. Um, I also, uh, what's relative to this conversation today is I sit on the executive board of NYC and Company, which is the official marketing and tourism company for our great city of New York. Um, I also sit on the board of Governor Cuomo's reopening of New York State um, and several others. Um, I've known Jer Reed for quite some time. I'm a Southern girl, but I do have roots in the Caribbean. Uh, my great grandfather is was Jamaican and I have several other Caribbean loves, but Antigua adopted me many, many years ago and I it, so I'm just thrilled to be on this conversation with you all today and looking forward to, to just feeling, feeling the sun and that, and that um, Caribbean breeze as the conversation flows. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Dorit. Thanks so much, Trinez. And we will go over to Aneka, Aneka Nurse, to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Nika Nurse and I'm the curator of Best Dress Plate, which is a platform that I created to celebrate Caribbean food, Caribbean oh, restaurants. Um, I also host events highlighting Caribbean food. Um, I've done events at the James Beard House um, where I bought chefs from Barbados, Trinidad, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And for two years now, I've hosted the Caribbean Guest Chef Holiday Series at the United Nations which has been an amazing, an amazing opportunity to bring the food and the Caribbean holidays uh, to the UN. You know, celebrating the holidays is not about gift giving, it's about food and family and fun. And that's what um, the Guest Chef, Chef series um, was all about. So um, my contribution to the Caribbean cuisine is exposure. It's all about exposure. Um, just as Nina said, you know, Caribbean food is not jerk chicken and roti. You know, it, it's, it, it, it has so many different influences from Asian, West Africa, um, Indian, all of the above. And it's time now for us to really celebrate the beautiful colors of the Caribbean cuisine. And that's what I do. Thank you so much. Well, the, the Minister of Tourism for um, Jamaica was invited to be a part of the panel and he was very excited about it. However, as you probably realize, Jamaica is looking uh, to reopen their borders. So he had a conflict today, but he was nice enough to do a pre-recorded welcome for all of you, both our panelists and our attendees. So we're gonna play, it's, it's about uh, close to three minutes, just so you can gauge yourself but he couldn't be here. So everything that he would have wanted to say, he bundled it up into this message, which I invite you to listen to um, at this moment. I know it's queued up and ready to go. It's on its way. Okay, I, I know that we, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our travel and tourism partners to this timely webinar, Culinary Tourism, the secret sauce in selling the Caribbean. The Caribbean has an amazingly diverse culinary heritage that is more than worthy of recognition. It is a rich convergence of historical influences, which have been stirred by time into a vibrant melting pot of cultures. This is most evident in the region's rich and innovative food scene. Caribbean cuisine tells a story 
of the people who came. It is the byproduct of the Spanish occupation, the slave economy, Indian and Chinese on indentureship, British colonialism, and Jewish and Syro-Lebanese migration. This cultural fusion has given us Puerto Rico's much-loved lechon asado, that is split-roasted suckling pig, Barbados's cuckoo and flying fish, Jamaica's world-renowned jerk pork, Guyanese pepper pot, and Trinidad's curry duck and roti. This wonderful culinary narrative ought to be shared with the world, and you, our valuable tourism partners, can help us to do so. And this is because the Caribbean region is now emerging from a COVID-19 induced shutdown, which has taken a heavy toll on our tourism dependent island economies. Before the pandemic, the Caribbean tourism was enjoying record arrivals. In 2019, stopover arrivals grew by 4.4% to reach 31.5 million outpacing the international rate of growth of 3.8%, reported by the World Tourism Organization and the highest growth rate recorded in the Americas. At the same time, cruise visits increased by 3.4% to 30.2 million, representing the seven years of consecutive growth in the industry. Unfortunately, Closed borders and other measures put in place to contain the pandemic spread could see tourism arrivals decline by 50% or even 80% or 100%, according to the Caribbean Development Bank. This could mean a 10% decline in the GDP of some countries and others up to 30%. As we move then to rebuild this vital industry amid COVID-19, we must look at tourism through a new and innovative lens. I often speak of a new generation of post-COVID-19 travelers, Generation C or Gen C, uh, that will reshape the way global tourism is marketed in the conceivable future. So Gen Z, unsettled by the crisis, will want reassurances and evidence that their experience overseas will be safe and not put their health and personal well-being at risk. Any new strategy to build out culinary tourism product must take Gen Z into account and demonstrate a commitment to new standards of health and safety. Okay, guys, that was, uh, it's actually a 10 minute message. However, we decided to um, at least give you the opening uh, part of it. And so what we'll do is post the entire message in three parts on our website, TASTC.org, or you can go to our Facebook page and uh, you can get the entire message, but it's a very rich message very thoughtful, and um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So uh, let's get into the discussion. And I want to start with Nina. And uh, oh, get out. Nina, tell us a bit, I know you touched on it briefly, but tell us a bit about your journey as far as culinary tourism, um, promoting the Caribbean, uh, you know, I know you are involved in several different restaurants and you have been over the years. Tell us where does Caribbean food fit in terms of a having tourism appeal um, in the wider market? I just want to hear your perspective because of course the goal here is how can we sell more, how can we do more business and how can we generate more interest in our culinary tourism, which is not necessarily always the first thing that people think about when they think Caribbean. Right, well, I, I think, you know, 
it started with my journey when I did Top Chef, you know, my mom, she said, you know, why do you want to go on this show? And, you know, she was, she, she was trying to discourage me from doing this show because she was going to be stressed out watching the show. And she's like, you know, I'm going to be so stressed out. I don't want you to go on this show. And I said, and this is, this was kind of the main driving force for me. Cause I said, I'm like, you know, mom, I can, if I get on this show, I can put Caribbean food and let people know what, what we're about. And that was kind of the driving force for me. And once, you know, I did the show, it kind of it made me more creative as a chef. It made me fall, um, become more proud of, you know, my heritage and my roots and really wanting want to shout that, up, you know, from the top of the mountain about like, hey, St. Lucian food or Caribbean food is really beautiful. You have to enjoy it um, and try it out. And that's why when I opened my restaurants, I could have cooked French, Italian, anything that I've done. That was my formal training. But I decided to cook my Caribbean food. And, you know, it's, I think that people just really don't know what Caribbean food is about. It's about the education of the history of the islands. You know, you have the slaves from Africa, what they brought, you know, on, on the ships. You have the settlers, you have uh, a lot of different influences. And those things, we really need to highlight that. And, and be proud of those things. And it's really, I think, you know, a lot of restaurants feel like they have to cater to the, the various palates. And I think that is kind of a downfall in the sense that you'll see scallops on menus or you'll see salmon, like showcase the local stuff because that's what people want. They want to have, you know, the local fish that is being grilled on the beach. That's what they came to the Caribbean for. They didn't come here for scallops and, and, and salmon. They can get that anywhere. So I think that is the, 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 the point we have to really shift that is as locals, we have to highlight that stuff because that's why people are coming to the Caribbean to sink their toes in the sand, you know, drink a cold red stripe. I mean, I lived in Jamaica for two years and the fondest memories I had was going on the beach and the lobster man has the lobster, you know, and he says lobster today. And I said, yeah, I'll have a lobster. And he says, which one? And then you know, he sets up the grill and it was just cut in half and grilled with a lime vinaigrette. I still remember this lobster, this is 20 years ago. And we have to create those moments for people when they come because that's what they came here for. You know, they want to have that unique experience that they can't get anywhere else in the world. And that's what we have to really package that for. That's great. Now, Monique, let's uh, move over to you. And of course, you know, you get to criticize Every virgin and chef, um, I'm saying that in a positive way, because you, you always are so very eloquent and diplomatic in your um, feedback. I just love it. And um, so you get to see a lot of different um, types of cuisine, a lot of exposure in your own um, business. I'm sure that you have to put a lot of thought into how do you distinguish your own offerings infuse perhaps your, your culture and your heritage. You know, Indian food happens to be one of my favorite um, types of cuisines. So I know you've put a lot of thought into um, marketing, positioning, and um, making an impact with your, um, your culinary talents. Tell us a bit about your experience with Caribbean food. And from your viewpoint, where do we fit? And how can we make our... Um, a greater impact with our food as we try to go after more of the tourism business? Um, to me, I think one of the most incredible part, um, as I was mentioning earlier about Caribbean food, is the fact that it is a melting pot. You know, Anika just mentioned that um, it is beyond what people's perception is, and which is what uh, I faced with Indian food also. When I came over here, there was a perception of Indian food is eight ninety five all you can eat buffet, and I'm like, no, <laughs> there is so much more to it than th uh, than just that. And I think that is what Caribbean food is all about: the fact that there is, you know, um, a Chinese influence. I mean, it is such a melting pot, and I think more people need to know that. And it is such a win win situation. I mean, imagine being in such a 
gorgeous setting with absolutely delicious fresh food i'm mean, like nina was talking about the lobster my mouth was watering that i am craving a lobster sitting on the beach right now right simple it's just homage to um the ingredients that you get which are as fresh as possible but it's also um it's also the awareness that uh, you know caribbean food is it's so vast it cannot be just um you know type hold or pigeon hold into a uh, you know two or three dishes and i think that's what makes uh, like caribbean food so intriguing um, and delicious to me fantastic uh let's move on to kevin kevin you you uh in addition to all of your pursuits and all of your accomplishments i think what makes your contributions extremely important here today is your involvement in the cruise sector and so um lots of our travel advisors sell cruises it certainly it makes a major contribution to the economy of the caribbean and so i know i i'd like to hear from your perspective some of the planning some of the strategy that goes into um putting together your culinary product as far as it relates to cruise and then of course um with all that we we're hearing about with covid-19 the minister i absolutely love his gen c i'm definitely stealing that that's definitely a very creative way to um come back and 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 revisit this market but kevin tell us a bit about your cruise um perspective as well as some of the the plans for the future all right great thanks for having me um i just wanted to quickly jump on kind of what nina was saying um real quick just in regards to kind of caribbean food and and what not when we had three restaurants in the caymans that was exactly our focus was to you know each restaurant represented a different region um and we kind of wanted to highlight that and then when i went to see you to read um in antigua quite a few times actually my brother and sister-in-law had that wonderful wedding out there um we you took us to a lot of spots that were off the beaten path and i think those spots need to be highlighted more um especially when it was you took me to some stands that were in the middle of nowhere and there were lines of of the locals just getting the food and i think those food should be highlighted um you took me to what looked like basically a shack and i had some of the most amazing goat i've ever had those are the things that i think you need to highlight just kind of on a perspective of what i saw that was missing and this was 7 years ago when i was there but maybe some of that has changed but to kind of focus on all that authenticity and where it is that's what i think should be highlighted now to get on the cruise ship industry um it's it's definitely a new world for us um with everything that we do we highlight food that's that's what we do um all of our cruises are highlighted around um each region that we go up to so if we're in seattle and we're doing the puget sounds um you know we're going to focus on all of the cuisine that they have out there and we actually have culinary cruises where we'll get wine vendors in and we'll do cruises based on whatever regions and locations we're going to we'll actually take the guests maybe a handful of them this can be a little tricky now with the groups of people but we would take 30 people go to a market buy stuff and then do a culinary demo um eight on every other cruise from that region so if we went up to alaska we would do the same thing get off and catch a can and get some you know all kinds of different things um you know people eat a lot of seal in alaska so we would cook and stuff like that you know so we have each region is very specific um and i kind of think that tends to what you guys are trying to do each island has a different feel and a different flavor um although very similar i think that it's very important to touch on what's what is known um for each sector each town maybe have different things i know that's what we kind of focus on and it's it's pretty much immense um an immense experience and like you were saying the lobster you know that you can't forget that's the experience we're trying to do for our guests not only do you want to see some historical stuff because we're very, we're called american cruise line so we're a super americana however you know if we're in louisiana you know baton rouge vicksburg new orleans wherever M- M- memphis we even go to nashville um so wherever we are we try to highlight each region and do at least one to two demos per cruise if it's a 7 day cruise we'll do two it's a 14 day cruise we'll do four um and depending on all our regions i think those are the things that people want especially nowadays where everybody's so food savvy 
Um, but some of the preparations that we have to take now are going to be interesting to kind of do those because you have to have smaller groups. You leave the boats, you have to, you know, have your forehead scanned and you have to have and make sure where are you going and where have you been? What bus are you going on? Um, everything is so highlighted now to try to contain any potential risk um, of these things. So I think we're all in a very challenging time now, especially as we, we just reopened 50% of my restaurant here in Connecticut, but we also have a ski resort. So we were sold out every night outside. However, people saw what we were doing, disinfecting chairs constantly, just constantly cleaning, tearing up things, um, you know, one-time use menus, um, you know, room service on these boats are going to be kind of tricky now because we're going to find more and more people are going to want to do room service instead of kind of hanging out. So it's a whole new mindset of trying to how to figure, figure things out. And I think that's going to be challenging for all of us as we reopen um, and kind of get through the world. Kind of rambled on a little bit there, <laughs> kind of went all over the place, but that's my kind of thoughts. No, that, that was very, very helpful. Now, I want to switch over. Uh, Suzette, I'm going to come back to you. But I want to hear from Trinez. Trinez, uh, she wears a very important hat, um, her affiliation with New York City. And oh, I forgot to mention that Trinez also was on a couple of cooking shows. She'll tell you um, in more detail. So I, I definitely have a team of winners here. Uh, but Trinez, in addition to that, tell us a bit about uh, some of the things that you're working on um, in New York City. We want to get a better understanding as to what are the strategies that New York City as, as, as a region might be looking at that we can learn from. And then also I want to hear a bit about, I know Sylvia's is in the culinary tourism business yeah. and many tour buses stop at Sylvia's. So you definitely are one of our competitors that we can also learn from. So tell us a bit about your experience and some of the strategies that you guys are looking at. Absolutely. Um, I'll start with um, my position with NYC and company sitting on that board. We get a ton of information um, funneled through the organizations. And we have offices literally all over the globe. And one of the most important messages that I think um, everyone that's, that's here should take away from is making sure that during this time, you are still keeping in touch with your demographic. Um, it's really important when you're talking about culinary and you're talking about inviting people um, to the Caribbean that when they get there, they experience that. Um, Airbnb has done an amazing job. People think of Airbnb as um, lodging, but they think about themselves as an experiential um, company, a company that provides you with an experience. And with the type of travelers that we have present day, that's what people are really going for. They're going for that unique experience, like what Nina said which is one of my favorite things to do, by the way, Nina, um, when I go to Jamaica is to get my lobster right on the beach prepared fresh for me. Those are, those are the things that, that people want to experience. You know, the last thing they want to do is um, show up on their cruise or at the resort and there's no representative from, from where they're traveling to or traveling from. So it's important to maintain um, authenticity through your dishes, through your menu offering. And during this time of COVID where folks are really um, getting antsy to get back to all of the beautiful places um, that they love, is to remind them as soon as they land, you know, the aromas, the smells, and just welcome them back like hey welcome back home you know we've been waiting for you here is you know your planters punch or or here is you know your beef pat your beef patty and your red stripe so it's really making sure that authenticity um rings without rings throughout because that's what makes everyone feel at home and right now with um the whole world being in a pandemic um we need to feel that. And that's what's going to relax everyone and you know, gain their, um, their attention and also their confidence in knowing that 
you know what, I am happy that, that you're back. You know, I'm welcoming you back and you should understand or feel that I've taken every um, precaution to make sure that you have an authentic and healthy and delicious um, experience. And, and Dereed mentioned um, the, the television shows. Um, representing a business that's almost six decades, um, it's been quite extensive. But um, in regards to culinary, um, I've been a guest on MasterChef Australia, MasterChef Poland, and tons of, of other um, uh, cooking shows that you can think of, as well as documentaries and things of that nature. Um, one of the things that um, New York is doing um, I'm on the governor's reopening board for, for New York City. I'm the smallest business out of 116. And it put me in a unique um, position, you know, um, to really allow the administration to understand what the impact of COVID is on the small businesses. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, a lot of the, the culinary experiences in the Caribbean are small businesses as well and family owned. And the things that um, you have to understand about being able to move forward because we can work through this period, you know, as long as you follow like proper guidelines. One thing that's great about going to the Caribbean during COVID is the fact that a lot of the restaurants there are open air. Open air is something that um, is beneficial um, to, to the guests to feel safe because the virus um, can't really survive. It's very delicate, the outer layers. And I'm not a doctor, but I've studied enough about this virus to understand what's the best um, way to be able to service our customers. And that's why New York is, um, we started yesterday with phase two, which included outdoor dining. Um, so that's something that you definitely want to get out in your messaging is that, you know, that Caribbean breeze, you know, that Caribbean breeze um, is definitely where you want to enjoy and unwind and, and be top of mind to um, visit when, when, um, when, when you're able to. So it's, um, we're, we're, in a, we're in a new normal, but the good news is that we're all in it together and we do what we do exceptionally well. And as long as we play to um, the authenticities of our offerings and we follow um, the guidelines, we should be fine. We will be fine. We will be fine. I know that it's a scary day. I was on a call um, last week with um, the head of the um, hotel committee for NYC and company. And there's a lot going on, but you know we're all in this together. And the more we have discussions like this, we're able to learn and be able to apply that to make sure that our industry comes back strong. Because after all, we're the, we're the industry that makes this whole life worth living. I couldn't agree with you more, Trinez. Yes. And uh, I, I'm really intrigued by what you mentioned as far as pooling our resources, working together, being in this together. I want to shoot over to Doug. Um, Doug has some, uh, I've known Doug for a long time. He has lots of great ideas in terms of marketing. We've certainly worked on a few initiatives and brainstormed on many more. But I know Doug has, um, he's a lover of the Caribbean. And, you know, one of the things we want to walk away um, with today, having had this discussion, is a new perspective on how we're going to um, conduct business differently, which includes, of course, marketing. So I know Doug, and I'm always intrigued, Doug, he's, a, he's an ideator. And so I'm going to give Doug an opportunity to share some of his ideas about how the um, Caribbean as a region can come together with our, with our similarities in, in food, yet our authenticity and our differences, how we can pull this all together into various marketing initiatives. Thanks, Dorit. You know, one of the things I just wanted to mention, I strongly agree with Kevin and Trinesse 
regarding, you know, having this process, you know, going in fearlessly, like a deep cultural dive. That's what a visit to any Caribbean island should be. I think that the days of, you know, years ago, people used to try to, let's say, from my perspective, Americanize everything, where you go to a resort, let's say, I don't know, in Montego Bay in Jamaica, and you may as well be in Miami. You wouldn't know the difference. As I kind of joke in a book I'm working on right now, you don't have to deal with that pesky cultural thing. I mean, that's the celebration. That's, I think, has to be fearless, and I think should be, and I think that, especially from a culinary perspective, People have gotten very bold. They want to do the deep dive. They want to be excited. I think we have to stop holding back and being conservative and just go for it. I think that's it's those exciting menus and really kind of riffing on the true cultural components of any different cuisine is really what's going to get people excited. And I think people's consideration for the culinary component of their travel plans is at a higher level than it's ever been in history. And I think it's, I see that really as an opportunity. And at the same time, there's the challenge, you know, the challenge being that, you know, how do we reach these people? I mean, you know, the track, what, New York Times just canceled their 2021 travel show, which is in January. The ability to reach out and have these trade shows and everything has really become limited. So I think utilizing technology as well as really um, partnering with one another strength in numbers, shall we say, or really the Caribbean islands kind of linking together as one um, really could create an opportunity, I think, out of difficulties. You know, I was used to like the saying, um, basically, uh, you know, difficult po problems are basically opportunities with work clothes on. And I really think that there could be a great opportunity to come from this. And I've been, you know, personally looking at the technology, the book, my book that Dorit was um, referring to is called Legacy, with the celebration of the San Marzano tomato. And we were really honored uh, recently to be um, designated best in the world by Gourmand World Cookbook Awards. And one of the things that we did was a digital version of the book with greetings from chefs, video greetings from chefs in 10 different countries. We had, we had 26 chefs from around the world and every single one of those chefs had an actual video greeting. And I wanted to share with you just a, a couple of things I wanted to show you as well as some other newer kind of technology, but just, if you don't mind, I'd love to take over the screen for just a moment. Okay, so let me just do this really quickly. And hold on a second. Let me see if I can screen share. Hold on one sec. Let's see, where is my desktop? Come on, guys. Should be right here. Can people see that? Hello? Yes, we can yes. see it. Yes, okay, we good. can see it. Okay, yeah. I just wanted, so let me just, I wanted to show you a couple of things just to give you an idea from the digital perspective. Um, so let me just go full screen on this for one sec. And one more time while I'm being blocked here. Sorry guys, hold on one second. It's, I'm closing. Let me. I'm so sorry about this. Give me one moment, okay? I have to get out of the full screen. Here we go. So, just as an example of how you know the embedding you can do. There's Monique. Johan, you might have seen me on Food Network's Chop. I'm also the chef owner of Johan Ale and Masala House. This kitchen that we are standing in, the owner of Tamso, Mockingbird, and Chattaval here in Nashville. We're so excited to be a part of this wonderful book which celebrates the legacy of San Marzano tomatoes. Now, John, thank you so much for including me with these incredible chefs, and I'm really excited to share my recipe of roast chicken with a makhani sauce. A makhani sauce is a butter tomato sauce and such a wonderful place to use San Marzano tomatoes. So that just wanted to give you an example of like the way that you can use technology now in all of these, you know, shall we say digital opportunities, you know, and traditionally too. So for example, we had, 
you know, 26 chefs that all gave a greeting from around the world. Let me show you one. And then the, the book itself, though, is like any other. Hold on a second. Let me close this out. The book itself, you know, you can do it like a traditional cookbook as well, where you're going to see recipes if this will load. But you, there are now so much more that you can actually accomplish with these books. And I'll give you one more example that we're looking at. And this is for moving forward because it's like, you know, for example, like, you know, the trade shows and the way things are, people, they're looking for a more um, enriched multimedia digital experience. So for example, there are things I was sharing this with Dorit and she asked if I would share this today. If I can get in here, I will do just that. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, my apologies. Of course I had this queued up, but it's giving me a hard time. So give me one moment. So there's, there's a newer, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the 360 panorama um, technology that's out there. It's gotten a lot more incredible as to, if my computer cooperates, I'll be able to show you this. It's become a lot more incredible of what you can do with some of the 3D technologies in how actually interactive it is and how much you can explore. So for example, if you were in a hotel in the Caribbean, and like, I'll give you an example because this is like an apartment in Brooklyn. If, if this will cooperate, I'll be able to do this. It's giving me a hard time right now. You can see there are pins that you can flag around different places. Um, you can, for example, let me go from room. It's, I think it's because we're sharing with so many people. It's giving me a hard time moving around. I wanted to show you how you could walk around. So for example, you could literally walk behind the kitchen. You could say, well, what does it look like, you know, when I'm standing in my kitchen and cooking dinner, what am I looking at? And you can literally walk around just for example, like you're in your hotel room. What does it look like on the balcony? And you could literally plant a pin, for example, this pin over here, it says spectacular views of the Williams rig. You could plan a, plan a pin where when you mouse over, a YouTube video would come up with a, um, a sunset, like a time-lapse sunset to see exactly. And I think in this day and age with it being harder to reach people and to really show them what it is that you're offering to have tools of this caliber and this enriched as far as multimedia goes becomes a real asset. So for example, you could take a book like the one we were looking at with different islands of the Caribbean, different hotels and do virtual tours, do video greetings. And I'm not talking a very, um, I'm not talking about a very like advertising heavy type of thing. I'm talking more about something that's really more editorial. That's more, I mean, people have become so savvy now. They see advertising a million miles away. If they feel like they're simply being pitched, it's a turnoff. So I think it's gotta be about a celebration. And I think that especially if the Caribbean comes together culturally, where they really link and try to work on a project like this together to really offer a celebration of the culture itself. I think it opens a lot of doors. And if you start to utilize some of these tools that are now available, it's a new way, shall we say, for Generation C, which I like that as well, to reach people and to basically excite them. Because, you know, these one dimensional pictures, it's so dated now. There's so much more that you can do. It's almost like you can step through a wormhole out of a picture and into a restaurant, and into a hotel, or have a video greeting from a chef or be there in the kitchen as they create a recipe for you. And that's the things that I'm really looking at is how do we utilize these resources to come together and really work under a new kind of platform. We have to work with what we have, but the resources are vast and it's a great time to become technologically savvy and to utilize these resources. Thank you so much, Doug. It's one thing to, to talk about the new normal but to actually experience the new normal and the reality of what we will face from a, compet from a competition standpoint, um, I think technology is definitely going to be one of the biggest takeaways and one of the big key learnings from our um, COVID experience. So thank well, you so much for that. One more thing really quickly. I just wanted to point out, you know, the technology that I was trying to show you, the 3D, it was hard because the platform we're on, but normally you can literally, it's like walking around the place, walk right up to a window, 
look out, turn around, walk. I mean, you're, it's not like, you know, some, a lot of you have sure have seen the 3D technology it was a camera in the room, you just do a circle. It's gotten so incredible that it's really like you're stepping out of out of a book or out of a video into another environment and it really i think it enriches the experience and gives someone something that they remember and that's what i was referring to so please to read i'm sorry to interrupt oh that's fine i think I, i'm always fascinated by some of these new solutions and um you know it's getting the product right is only one aspect of it we have to look at our distribution channels how do we get the word out with all of the limitations that you alluded to. So that was very, very helpful, Doug. Let me uh, mosey on over to Suzette, because Suzette, you're the one who actually has to sell this stuff. We can talk, we can talk about it, we can fantasize about it, we can speculate what needs to be done, but in terms of connecting with the end user and getting the direct feedback from clients who may be interested in the Caribbean, you definitely have your finger on the pulse. But tell us a bit about um, how you how do you go about, well, tell us about some of the options that are available. I know Jamaica has a very refined culinary tourism product. I'd like to hear about some of those experiences, but also what types of clients or customers typically um, are in search of culinary adventures? Well, for me, um, my clients are very interested in the culinary experience. Um, they tend to be more higher end clients, uh, that they have um, a lot of exposure to cultures and foods. So when they go away, they want to be able to experience it. And I agree with Doug's point that there was a period um, in the Caribbean where everybody was trying to kind of appeal to a broader market so that maybe the food might not have been as well seasoned as we would have been used to. But I think now, uh, 2019, um, you will find that at all the major Caribbean hotels, they will offer a section with local cuisine, whether you're in Dominican Republic, whether you're in Jamaica, uh, whether you're in Aruba, they will offer a small section of the buffet to give you typical, tasty, authentic Caribbean cuisine. Um, the clients that I have, they like things to be customized. So what I try to do, it doesn't matter where my clients are traveling, um, I am very involved in that because I, food is a passion. So for me, one of my clients, she was turning 50 last year and she rented about four villas on the beach in Negril, Jamaica, and she brought 20 friends. Uh, the majority of whom had never been to Jamaica before, and she wanted me to work with her to customize their experience. And one of the things we did is we uh, sent out, of course, preference sheets to find out who was allergic, who was vegan, any out of um, intolerances. And we worked with the local chef. It was at Idler Wild Villas in the grill on the Seven Mile Beach. And we really came up with an amazing program for them every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, we curated the option, and some of the tours um, I did for them was the Appleton Rum Tour, which the minister had referenced earlier. Um, they also went to Wyeth Falls, and then at night, I tried to do a different program every night. Uh, the most popular program that I did, it's a local gentleman in Jamaica that he does what we call a rum bar tour. Uh, a rum shop, a rum bar is a part of Caribbean culture, um, there's a bar on every street corner, um, as we would say in Jamaica. And uh, for her and her guests, that was the highlight because they got to go some, to some very lovely places like the cliff in Jamaica. And then they ended up at the actual driver's personal rum bar where his wife did Jamaican um, appetizers for them. The codfish fritters, um, ackee and sawfish quiche. So they just enjoyed that authentic experience. And I have to say from that one group, I've gotten many referrals. And that's just a sample of some of the things that I have done and that I have tried to customize for my clients. And we do have great culinary tours in Jamaica. You have two sisters in Falmouth, Jamaica, that they do a fantastic walking tour. And it takes people to see the real Jamaica, whether it's to eat a patty or to eat a curry goat or to eat some pudding. Uh, that those are elements that make 
our culture unique and the Caribbean unique as well. Okay. So, um, Neka, I want to um, go over to you because you, I see you as our media maven. You travel to a lot of these um, cultural events. Um, I know that you, last time we spoke, I know that you had, um, you'd been to Barbados. You actually travel. So you actually play an important role as a consumer, a taste maker, as well as a promoter. And I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell us about your experiences. Where is this culinary tourism product going? And what, what advice do you have in terms of rebuilding and strengthening our product based on your experience? Well, as Doug and Trinez and Nina have all said, one of the most important things when it comes to culinary is authenticity. Right, and really looking zeroing in on what the t what your customer looks like today. Tourism has definitely changed from what it was back in the '80s and the '90s. I can remember going um, to Jamaica and feeling special because we went to an all-inclusive hotel. You know, that was the thing. You know, you go to all-inclusive, you don't pay for anything, your liquor, and your food. but the food was not open. And now when you look at the tourists, they're a younger generation who are really connected to cultures and really want to know what the culture is like. So you find now that private retreats is a community that's, that's building now. People want to have that private visitation, that exclusivity. They're looking to hire chefs so that they can cook the local foods if they don't feel comfortable going out to um, different areas, just as Kevin mentioned you took him around in Antigua to those different um, street vendors. You know, people are looking for that exclusivity. Culinary travel is becoming really big. You have a lot of the um, farm to table that's really growing. You know, you have a young lady who left everything here in New York and moved to Jamaica and created that bed and breakfast and very successful. You know, these are the things that tourists are looking for. What I think needs to happen from a tourism standpoint is, as Doug mentioned, WWW has made the big world small. And that's really why I created Best Dress Plate as an avenue for these chefs and restaurants who may not necessarily get the exposure, who don't have the time to go online and market, hey, look, today I'm making kalaloo. They're busy in the kitchen cooking, right? So it's a Best Dress Plate, um, Caribbean food, Network, you have a plethora of different food entities, platforms that are celebrating these cultural foods and are giving these people the exposure that I think the tourism board needs to start to look towards from a standpoint like, listen, with COVID-19 happening, this is our opportunity to kind of rebrand all-inclusive. Let's go into the community and pull some of these street vendors, whatever paperwork or whatever, I don't know that part, but let's pull in some of the popular street vendors. In Jamaica, you have Scotchies. In Trinidad, you have the doubles. Bring some of those people into the hotel. Just like here in the States, they have these, um, the food, the food um, platforms, the places like in, in Manhattan where they have all these different food uh, vendors that all come together and they have that one place. Create that inside of the hotels. This is your opportunity to really rebrand what all-inclusive means because people do not want to eat pancakes, eggs, and bacon. They want to eat ackee, saltfish, doubles, pepper pot. They want that, you know? <laughs> and these local people could come and talk in lengths as how they prepared it. This is what people like. They like to get involved in that. Um, the other thing that, um, again, the authenticity that's really important is just really branding these food festivals. As you mentioned, I did go to Barbados because Barbados has been one of the islands that have done a very, very good job as identifying themselves as the culinary capital of the Caribbean. Um, there's been some, you know, <laughs> rumblings around with other Caribbean islands that are like, hey, what about me? So you have, you know, BBI really picking up steam and creating these food festivals, St. Kitts, um, St. Croix, they're really starting to have these food festivals to bring people into the cuisine, learning more about it. Tobago, you know, they have the Yam Festival. Like all of these different food festivals is another opportunity again for the tourism to 
really partner with these local promoters that are putting together these these events and come together to really build that culinary tourism so they can pull more people in outside of the normal, you know, going to the different um, Dunderbird Falls, you know, the different sightseeing food, you know, it's a big thing. Ever, with COVID, you know, we had um, Dr. Rayburn, the, the doctor in Brooklyn, who everyone was speaking about that he beat, he beat COVID by home remedies. You go, I went into my health food store. I couldn't find any sea moss. I couldn't find anything, you know, because people are like, oh my gosh, these, these remedies are good. And with COVID, the fact that people are starting to realize that your health is what's going to help you build. Um, the Caribbean is known to have ingredients that are good to use as antioxidants and, and good to fight against all of these different diseases. So that's another, another area that can be looked at as far as um, tourism and travel destination, you know, for, um, for the new tourism once everything really opens. And, and really that's what I've been trying to, to do is more so seek out chefs, seek out events, put them on the platform to give it, to give it more exposure so people can learn about it and be intrigued to go and visit these different islands so that they can experience the island outside of just the music and the beaches. And there you have it, folks, the grassroots approach. I love that. I mean, bring the, bring the cook shop into the hotel is what I hear you saying. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a phenomenal idea. And uh, certainly I hope that there are some hoteliers and food and beverage managers on, you know, who are involved here listening today, um, getting, some, some good ideas um, in terms of how we can revamp our tourism product. Well, oh, believe it or not, yes. Just, just quickly, I just wanted to um, reiterate that, um, how do I pronounce your name? I don't wanna butcher. Neka. Neka, Neka, so pretty. Um, Neka is, is right on it because in the culinary industry right now in the States, one of the fastest growing um, new entities for restaurants are food halls. That's the so word. food, yes. So food halls are exactly what's driving um, the real estate and culinary industry in the U.S. right now. So you're, you're spot on. Bringing, Tell us what are food halls. I'm not Okay, so food it. hall. In Brooklyn, there's a food hall, which let's think Chelsea Market to make it easier. Chelsea Market um, in, in Manhattan. Oh, so like a food court. Yes, yeah, so it's it's an upscale food court. Gotcha. And that's where you would go and you would find all of your um, tastemakers from that area. Artisanal food. Exactly, the artisanal Italy, food. Italy would be an example as well. Italy, exactly. So that's what people are really looking for. So you, if you brought that into the hotel, forget about it, you, you'd have great variety, you get that authenticity, you can have that experience, you can meet with the shop owner. That's definitely a, a great, a great um, way to look forward to the future. No, great. that's amazing. No sit down. Uh, let, yeah, let me double back to Nina. Um, and I let me apologize for Kevin. Kevin had to leave. We certainly understand and thank him for his contributions. We know what, what time it is. It's COVID time and you know, when when your employer, he had to uh, rush to a meeting. So we, we went out, we didn't get to say our official goodbye, but um, we really appreciate Kevin's contributions. And I have lots of fond memories with about his cooking. Uh, Nina, let's double back to you. Um, because believe it or not, we're on our second round and time goes by so quickly. But Nina, as a Caribbean woman who is um, seen in many circles as a culinary ambassador based on your your um, international appeal on uh, Top Chef, what advice would you give to um, not just St. Lucia, but to um, Caribbean destinations ac across the region in terms of uh, how do we prepare for Gen C? That's my new buzzword. Nina, you're muted. Nina, your mute is on. You got to press your, your mute button. 
sorry. Um, so I think that what we need to really do is look at the resources we have locally. You know, when I was growing up, coconut oil was in, the, in a, an abundance, right? And now coconut oil is so trendy. You know, people are using it as, you know, facial creams to brush their teeth, to put it in their hair, all these things. And these are the things that are in our backyard. And just hopping back to what was mentioned earlier about the culinary tours and talking about, I went to Bermuda uh, this past October and we did a, a walking tour of just this, you know, not forested area, but you know what I mean. And we were walking and the guide was picking all these leaves and she was just like, taste this. She's like, okay. And, and I'm, as a chef, you know, I was very excited and everything had a medicinal um, element to it. So she was saying, you know, this cures cancer. This brings down blood pressure. This, we have all these things that we don't even have to package. It's just about educating people because I was thinking, I, I'm like, I just want to pick all these leaves and take it back to the States with me. But those are the things we really need to showcase and, and make people feel like, you can find this anywhere else in the world except in the Caribbean. And that is something that we really have to show the appreciation of the bounty of what we have available to us. And really, you know, things like uh, cassava flour, you know, you have a lot of people with a lot of dietary issues that can eat gluten and people make, you know, cassava cakes. And, you know, you stop by this bakery and you have that, you know, freshly baked and they show how they make the flour, like all those things is also about educating the guests as well. So when they leave, they're like, man, I, I went to the Caribbean, I learned something really cool, you know, and just having them take those things back with them and just also making them want to come back because some of those things are just not available, you know, except in those islands. That's great. Thanks so much, Nina. Um, Monique, your chance to give us some really um, critical advice um, in terms of strengthening our culinary product in the Caribbean? I pulled a Nina, right? <laughs> I think uh, uh, a lot of these experiences, especially culinary experiences, are based around people um, getting a feel of the local product and techniques. Um, one of my favorite, and uh, again, because I'm on Chopped, I of course am biased about the entire show. I think it's so fun. But, um, you, you know, to have uh, culinary programs which go beyond um, cooking or having a local chef come and teach what needs to be done, getting the guests involved, you know, uh, getting four ingredients which are, uh, you know, so quintessential um, Caribbean and having people explore those ingredients because, I mean, a lot of these ingredients have not, people haven't worked with it before, right? How they can put their own signature on it and make it their own. Because then when you leave the Caribbean, you're taking a part of an ingredient with you, which you are going to uh, induct in your everyday life. And that way you make it, you know, you form that connection with, uh, with a place. And I think that is very, very important just to offer experiences to people that they have not experienced before. Uh, you know, just cooking in a coconut, uh, you know, using cassava flour, all of these things I think is very integral in forming that connection. And I think it's that connection which will inspire people to keep on coming back over and over again. That's great. And I guess we can look out for the chopped Caribbean uh, edition, huh? If it hasn't happened already. I know it should, right? <laughs> I mean, just imagine the number of ingredients. I would oh, love to see goodness. what people do with it. You may need a dictionary to pronounce some of these things. <laughs> As it is, I need a dictionary to pronounce most of the things. So I it's know, just right? fine. <laughs> just quickly, how, how do they decide on these ingredients? Are they crowdsourced or how do they come up with these really interesting ingredients on chopped? I'm just curious. 
Uh, so there is an entire culinary team that comes up with all of these ingredients. It is, and they do come up with uh, a lot of different things that they can do, how they can make a composed dish. So it's not for random ingredients. It is really thought uh, through. Uh, and um, But there are a couple of episodes which are crowdsourced. That's wonderful. Still one of my favorite shows. It's just so fascinating. Thank Great. You. Uh, Doug, you're up next. I'm tell ready. Us, <laughs> tell us a bit about, um, you know, I, I know where your passion lies, but give us some, some closing remarks. Believe it or not, we probably have about 10 more minutes. And just give us some, some, some additional advice about how we go about creating some of these technology tools, how you can be of assistance, and your vision in terms of how we can really grow our technology capabilities at this critical time. Well, one thing, you know, Jareed, I know you and I have spoken about this briefly, and it's something that I've spoken about um, with a couple of my associates is creating, you know, if you really just want to address like what I would do and what it's something that we've talked about actually trying to get proactive about is creating a digital book. For example, a book like Legacy, that's really a celebration of Caribbean culture. Um, uh, Caribbean food, Caribbean culture, Caribbean lifestyle, where you could create a, an organic living document. So it really could be a, ce a celebration of the Caribbean. So it could be something where, let's say you could have hotels that want to participate or individual restaurants that want to participate. Let's say, for example, sailing week, which happens every day in Antigua, every day, excuse me, every year. Um, in Antigua that wants to participate. And it really could become, instead of, you know, I know because of like COVID-19 and all this, the budgets are gone. You can't go in and be like, oh, we're gonna spend six figures on doing this big, it's just not there. But also the cost, one of the beautiful things that I love about these digital and living documents is that once they're produced, you could send out a million copies and there's no cost. It's a click of a button. So let's say there was a master document that could include everything from people like Manit Shohan giving you know examples of a dish that you might find in a restaurant at your hotel in Antigua, or it's going to be you know an experience in Turks and Caicos or whatever that might be. Um, you know, airlines where people have call up and they're interested or they just book a flight in the Caribbean, they could be send that out to them. Tra uh, um, travel agents could be sending them out. The hotels could be sending them out because the cost of snail mail and the cost of printing is so exorbitant that it's crazy. But the beautiful thing of working on something like this, a way that I would approach it, is instead of going to, let's say, the island of Antigua, and I keep doing that because to read you and I have been speaking about, and saying, okay, we need, you know, five figures or, you know, whatever it is to do this, we could literally do it on a restaurant by restaurant basis, on a hotel by hotel basis, an island as an overview, an individual offering where it literally could be like, you know, 500 or $1,000 for someone to have something in there. And the idea, the way that, the thing that I think it's most important is not just compiling it because it's kind of thing that could constantly be updated. And once it's paid for, it's paid for. But the idea is to have that link at your disposal. You could end up with a three, four, 500 page digital section where let's say page 72 starts on, you know, the island of St. Bart's. And in there, you might have restaurants, you might have hotels, you might have cultural experiences. But the thing is, once it's there, it's there. And it's something that just keeps growing and evolving and can be utilized by a wide resource of people. The main thing, though, that I think is the most critical for making something like that work is it can't, again, and I'm going back to the same thing, it can't just feel like one big advertisement. It's got to be editorial. It's got to be written in that way. It's got to tell the story. And I think that's, you know, that's something that I kind of am involved in. It's something I've been discussing with Dereed. But that's something I think could be a real opportunity for the islands to come together. I mean, you could do that on a, on a single island basis and create, um, you know, basically a book, a digital book. But I really see it more as a Caribbean project that could be shared. Like I said, anytime someone contacts a travel agency, they may be interested in the Caribbean. They can be sent that link with zero cost. I mean, once it's built, once you're involved, it's there forever. And that's, I think there's a certain beauty to that, especially if you start to add on these really uh, sophisticated uh, multimedia tools, it could get really exciting. That's great. And Doug, as you were speaking, what I thought about, I, I know in the past, uh, we had separate brochures. There was one for sailing, one for cooking, you know, one for the culinary, one for, you know, you had, you know, they were it, they were disparate um, promotional um, 
books that we used to try to um, target, I guess, our different demographics. What I hear you saying is with limited access to, to our end users and even to some of our travel advisors, from a tourist board perspective, it may be something that is a new tool that's all encompassing with all of the information that travel advisors need to really target the end users is what I hear you saying. So I think, I think no it's doubt. a really great idea. There's not, not only is it all the information, but it also could help to educate the travel advisors as well. There are areas they might not have been to. And like I said, there's no way you're not mailing something. It's like the click of a button and they have this beautiful thing that it's something they want to keep going back to. I think it's something that people would save and especially if it's written in a way that's editorial and not just like a straight brochure. It seems a little more down to earth, a little more honest, a little bit more objective. Certainly, and, be, be, and, and of course, without dwelling on this too much is the shareability factor of all of this. But let me scoot on over to um, Suzette can I say one thing, Dorit? I'm sorry, just before you go on. A perfect example is like the book that we, you know, that we just completed the digital version. I reached out recently to American Red Cross to offer to help fundraise for them, for them to give out unlimited versions of our book for anything from a dollar up donation to give a free digital copy of the book because there's zero cost involved. And that's just, you know, so you, your mind is like, as you could give it to us the whole world and it doesn't cost you a dollar. That's amazing. Thanks for that, Doug. Uh, let's go up, go back to Suzette. And Suzette, tell us um, a bit about everything we've talked here today. Of course, everything lands on your shoulder. You need to close the sale. Tell us, uh, what advice do you have for your, um, your colleague uh, travel advisors in terms of how they can uh, better target um, just general um, travelers? to the region and then also because we have such a cross section of attendees on this webinar, what advice do you have for some of the other sectors, the tourist boards, the hotels? What, what would make your life a lot easier in closing the sale? Um, I think everyone talked about authenticity and the fact that we have to have that. I know for sure the tourist boards now have changed the way they do farm trips so that when, as agents, we go to the islands, we do get that very authentic experience, whether it's going to see, you know, somebody doing curry goat on a wood fire, somebody doing uh, pudding over a uh, coal stove. So we are getting that authentic experience as agents. So it's for us now to translate that to our clients. And I think it's the messaging that we are here and during COVID, many of the hotel partners did wonderful webinars, like Couples Resorts, for example. They did webinars on cooking and yoga. Uh, they had a reggae band almost every Friday night. So you had different experiences that people could really feel like, okay, I'm not there in person, but here I am in spirit. And I do believe that as agents, it is our job to engage with our clients and to qualify them when we speak to them. Just like how we ask them if they're interested, you know, in a five-star or four-star, you could ask, listen, I, I can put together a culinary experience for you. Would that be something you would enjoy? And I'm pretty sure nine times out of ten, people will want to do that. Um, I myself, I have a food tour coming up the end of October. I've partnered with Farm Up Jamaica, which is a uh, charity in Jamaica that they want to um, help Jamaicans be more um, independent in the agricultural space, and they have created farms all over the island um, at schools as well, and they're organic, non-GMO, and we have people who are coming from the United States who want to have that experience, to have a farm experience, and of course, we're going to showcase the culinary, and uh, for any agents that are watching, it's commissionable to you as well, so if you wanted to reach out to me, you know, you can. Um, I'm at uh, Curated Food Vacations is my um, Instagram handle. Uh, Neka, you're up next. Um, we're winding down. So from a grassroots, events-focused, taste maker, all of the wonderful things that you do to keep our Caribbean uh, culture and food alive, what advice do you have 
for some of the decision makers, some of the travel advisors in terms of the trends that you see emerging as far as the culinary world? Um, I think it's really knowing your demographic and how to speak to them. Um, because I, I call them the Metro Caribbean American generation. Um, I kind of fall into that category where we're now adults and we have children. However, um, we're not there. Our children are not afforded the opportunity that we had growing up where we were able to go back home. We were able to go to Barbados and to Trinidad and to Jamaica and spend the entire summer. I never knew what summer camp was. My summer camp was being shipped on a plane on Biwi to Trinidad, and that was it. So I have the familiarity. I know what the Caribbean is because I was there. I don't rely on what the media is telling me, you know, Pitch Lake is like in Trinidad. Oh, no, I've been there. I know what it's like. You know, I know what Barbados is because I, I've been there. So now for us, we have children that we want to connect to the culture. It's it's more of how do you market to us so that we can say, yeah, we would like to go and visit this resort because they have different elements that's going to appeal to me as an adult from a food standpoint, appeal to the children as far as cultural awareness, educational component, and even so if my mate is not of Caribbean descent, they're also getting educated on the Caribbean. It's more really understanding the demographic of who's looking to get that culture awareness, and also include that entertainment component. Everybody knows about the music, but the education component is very, very important. Um, I think that's the key now. People are looking for purpose. They're looking for to dig, dive, dive in more from the cultural standpoint. They don't want to just know about Marcus Garvey. You know, there's more to it. You know, so it's it's really having that education, cultural, um, culinary, all of that wrapped into one to appeal to the individuals like myself. That's great. Uh, just some housekeeping things before we kind of like allow everyone to give their parting um, words and, and advice. Uh, just so you know, this is hosted by Travel Advisors Selling the Caribbean. We're a private Facebook, Facebook group of travel agents. And for those of you who may not be members or you're interested, send us, check us out on Facebook, especially if you're in the travel space and send us a request. We'd love to have you join the movement. We're a grassroots movement. I would like to acknowledge my partners in crime or I should, I should say partners in travel. Uh, we have Ke Kelly Font Fontenelle Clark. And also we have uh, Natalie John as well. Erica Jackman is also one of the people who helps us out. And also we have uh, Rial Hamilton Romeo. We have Danielle Bird, who's been helping us a lot with research. And we have Dr. Dave Ray. Uh, and while I'm on that topic, if you have not yet tuned into our culinary demos, we've been having them all week. We started on Sunday. We had a chef from Antigua, he's in Toronto and Zoom is a wonderful product. He cooked a really great Father's Day dinner. And then yesterday we were um, treated to a, a real delight with Chef Simpson, Patrick Simpson um, from Jamaica. And we also had uh, Chef Claude Lewis, another Chopped alumni um, that won one of the episodes. Tonight we have St. Lucia and Antigua. Again, we have Chef Sean Benjamin and we have Alicia Matthews tonight, they're on. And we invite you to go to our website for the lineup of chefs and the times. They're usually six o'clock from Monday to Friday. On Saturday, we have a show at one. And what it is, we pair two chefs together so you can get a flair for two Caribbean islands at a time. And so we've been getting really great feedback and it's very interesting learning about the various islands. So I also want to remind anyone who may have joined us late uh, there will be a free digital download of uh, Doug Singer's book. Um, and if you're interested in receiving that free download, you must uh, drop your email in the comments box so that we can forward it to you at the end of the show. So let me, we're almost out of time. Let me just give everyone one minute, one minute as in 60 seconds to give your final thoughts 
and you know it's really been a great um, experience listening to your to your insights and your different perspectives. And I hope that everyone found it to be a very enriching and rewarding experience. Nina, you're up. Tell us um, your final minute about um, Caribbean cuisine and the culinary product. Well, I think, you know, in closing, I just want to say that the St. Lucia, uh, I'm sorry, not St. Lucia, the Caribbean, I'm a little biased. <laughs> um, I think the Caribbean has so much to offer and to explore. It's not just about white sandy beaches. I think that there's a lot of cuisine, a lot of culture that people can explore and really, you know, open their minds and, and take it all in because it is very unique and there's nowhere else like it. And I hope that people can travel to the Caribbean once they feel comfortable. And there are ways that we are getting creative to try and extend that. So thank you. Okay, Manit, let's get your final thoughts on Caribbean well, food. I mean, Go right ahead. Um, I am absolutely uh, saying, uh, bye to everyone feeling very very hungry and wishing i was at the caribbean so i am um i am uh, like so impressed with how everybody is coming together uh, and talking about the food and the place and if anybody doesn't after this travel to the caribbean all i can say is that it's their loss but i am going to be there as soon as i can go we we will make sure that happens nina absolutely it's long overdue Okay, let's get uh, Doug Singer up to give us his final words. Um, I just wanted to thank you for having me. And I think, I think, you know, it's interesting because I think that this was put together as a solution or the beginning of a solution or to open discussions. But I really think that the more I see that, the way I see people coming together and I, everybody that's a part of this panel, I see more and more that this is truly an opportunity. And I think if we remember and continue to look at it like that, then more opportunities will consider, uh, continue to present themselves and more opportunities to work together will be offered. Great, Trinez, give us your final thoughts. Yes, and, my final, uh, yes. Aside from, from me, um, I can't wait for Sylvia's to be reopened to come uptown so we can oh, hang out open. and do some soap. Oh, you are? We are okay. open. We've been, That's we've good been to open know. the entire time um, doing takeout and okay. delivery. You know, if that marquee goes dark on Lenox Avenue, it's a sad day in Harlem. So we have been open every day straight since the uh, the pandemic. And we also started a food pantry on Sundays. So if anyone's interested in supporting the food pantry, we partnered with the National Action Network, Reverend Sharpton, and the CARE organization to um, just offset the fact that most food pantries are closed on Sundays. And Sundays is such a vibrant day in Harlem that we just wanted to give some normalcy, a sense of normalcy back to our community. And literally people ha start lining up at 7.30 in the morning and the pantry opens at 12. You Is there any music? Um, we do have music playing. We have gospel playing outside. Um, people go onto our website, they buy gift cards and then we donate the gift, the gift cards along with the pantry items. So inside That's of the wonderful. shopping bags, we have our Sylvia's food products, cornbread mix and collard greens. And then we have a prepackaged meal from the care organization and as many um, Sylvia's gift cards as we can, as we can pass out. So well, definitely put some information in our comment section. You may oh, find, you know, there, there are people out there who want to support your initiative. I think it's so critical at this time to remember, you know, in, in everything that we do, there are people out there who are really going through some severe hardships. So absolutely. Uh, and I think that this is a good this is a good way to reinforce the um, the travel to the Caribbean and, and the culinary. While the whole world is paying attention to Black Americans, um, plenty of Black Americans are have roots in the Caribbean. And I think that it would be wise to um, highlight that aspect of the diaspora during this time as well. Everyone take care and be safe and healthy. Well, it seems like I have a second. Also, I have an initiative with City Meals on Wheels called 
um, Cornbread and Conversation senior calls where you can actually call a senior during this time. They're so isolated. And as you can imagine, they're, they're alone. So you can contact City Meals on Wheels so you can virtually volunteer with that. Did we lose to read? I don't see our box. It looks like we lost to read. So we, oh, may, we might be done. <laughs> we may be on our, we may, uh, I think we have to all just wave goodbye. Thank yeah. Um, I mean, it's a pleasure meeting the rest of the panel members. Um, I look forward you. to kind of hearing from you all in the future and hopefully we will connect again. Yes. Yes. Same all right. Same. I would like guys, that. Take care. And thanks take everybody care. for participating Bye. in the Thank panel. Bye. 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 Bye.